Nerd Reviews, and today the 2020 Advent Calendar of Christmas Horror Movies continues on, this time opening the 13th door. That's right, we've crossed the halfway threshold, and this time we're going to be taking a look at the 2011 movie, A Cadaver Christmas. Currently available to stream on 2B TV, well that's where I watched it at the very least, free with ads. This was a bit of a lark of a pick. Uh, I pretty much had three pieces of criteria that I wanted to meet today when it came to a movie to review. Christmas, horror, and something a little bit lighthearted. Yesterday was draining and I wanted something to kind of just lighten the mood a little bit. At the very least lighten my mood and kind of just reapproach things with hopefully a sense of whimsy, holiday cheer, and silliness. And the question is, did this movie deliver that? Absolutely, and then some. This was a sleeper surprise hit for me. This has less than a thousand views on IMDb, and honestly, I think that that's a little bit, well, it deserves more at the very least, so maybe I can bring some attention to it. Directed by Joe Zerul and written by Joe Zerul, Daniel Raritan Hale, and Hanlon Smith Dorsey. And this movie opens up in a bar, specifically, Eddie's Bar. Eddie, played by Ben Hopkins, and sitting across from him is the lonely drunk Tom, played by Hanlon Smith Dorsey. And it's Christmas Eve. They are basically wallowing in their own self-pity and loneliness as they are just kind of sitting there getting used to each other's company. One gets the idea through the conversation that this is not an infrequent occurrence for them. Although something is about to break the monotony when the other writer, Daniel Raritan Hale, enters the bar playing the janitor. And this particular janitor is covered in blood, smelling horrible, and asking for the bathroom to clean up. The situation basically devolves from there into the janitor explaining what had happened to him as he was working the night shift at a university, particularly in this case in the science department. And he is attacked by roaming, walking cadavers who he then kills and then goes to the bar, seeking solace, refuge, what have you. And through a confluence of events with local police getting involved and wanting to take him to the scene of the crime and so forth, they all kind of pile in the car and go back to the university to check things out. Now, the thing that really made this movie, for me at least, was the characters. All of them were vibrant and silly and well-written, just with a great delivery as well. Most of them were just over-the-top caricatures, but played extremely well. The janitor, for instance, my favorite character in this, channeled a lot of hard-boiled, detective, noir kind of speech patterns and styles and so forth. Meanwhile, he's uh, twirling his mop around heroic-like as he's killing these cadavers. Meanwhile, we have the drunk who is just lovably oafish in his <laughs> mannerisms and the physical comedy that ensues from him. Throughout all of this, there's that top level of silly, unabashed comedy, physical, verbal, the whole bit. But underneath that is actually a very sharp wit. One of the most critical things regarding comedy is timing, and it's an incredibly difficult thing to get right. And this movie, the writers and the directors and the performances and so forth, it felt like it came naturally to them. These were not seasoned players. These were not seasoned filmmakers. This had a very low-budget amateur feel to it through and through. If you're going to kick this on and expect some sort of mainstream production budget, you're going to be sorely disappointed and probably put off by it. But if you get past the rough edges and the amateur technical equipment that they have because they are held back from things like the nicer cameras, the nicer lighting rigs, the big budget special effects, that kind of thing. But what they have is a lot of heart, a lot of charm, and a lot of natural comedic ability. And that's what really shows on the screen. And that's one of the reasons I really fell in love with this movie. And that's not to say that it was perfect. Far from it. It does have its blemishes and it does have its flaws. I do think that the actual tempo of the film, it did drag in some places. There were some moments, especially about the two-thirds mark, in which it really felt like they needed to pick up the pace a little bit. And they did. It just took a little while to get there. So the patience was ultimately rewarded, but that portion right there was a little bit of a blemish. 
and it suffers from some other aspects to it in terms of the writing because not every joke is going to land. But I would also be remiss if I told less than the truth and I made the claim that every line of dialogue was extraordinarily well written. That's not the case. Some of it was just to pass the plot along. Some of it was just for silliness that didn't really land, but most of it was worth it. There are plenty of comedic horror films out there where it may elicit a guffaw or some smiles throughout, but this one actually had me laughing hard and missing some dialogue as a result of it. I had to stop, pause, backtrack, and sometimes I was just very grateful for Tubi TV to break with some commercials because I needed some time to compose myself. I was enjoying it that much. I gotta be honest, this was not subtle, dry humor. Yes, I think that the underlying wit was razor sharp, but this did have on the top layer, just slapsticky, Three Stooges-esque silliness. And if that's not your thing, this is absolutely one to pass on. It just isn't for you. But for me, it was exactly what I was looking for. I'm going to be further honest and say that the, this is the 13th right now. And I've been so busy with fucking everything that I have not yet felt the Christmas spirit in my heart. It's just kind of been December. I've been going through the paces. I've been trying to get things going. I've been working my ass off at a lot of different projects, this channel included. And it's been fun. And I've been, you know, I've hung out the lights. I hung, you know, you know, did the tree the whole bit. But it hasn't been in here yet. I haven't felt it. I haven't heard the songs come on the radio and want to belt them out with them. But I gotta say, after watching A Cadaver Christmas, between the blend of the comedy of the blood and guts and gore and the excessive amounts of all of it, which there was, low budget, you know, aside, they really did a lot with it. And the Christmas cheer embedded within, with the Christmas songs and the feeling of the holidays and so forth, especially through the lovable oafish charm of the Tom Drunk character. I now have the sugar plums dancing in my head. They are there. The bells of Christmas are ringing for me. I finally feel it. I was hoping that I would before Christmas and this movie brought it out in me. So I think that somehow in my desire to just kick on something brainless, mindless, and light, I came across a movie that I would have to say is absolutely now in my top 10 recommended Christmas horror movies out there. And for that reason and all the reasons contained within this review, I highly recommend the 2011 silly horror Christmas classic that is A Cadaver Christmas. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on my next review. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.